Hello, my YouTube friends. Today, I decided to go through a lot of my watercolor supplies, just revisiting a lot of supplies that I have and that I am very, very blessed and grateful to own. So eventually, I think I'm going to do a tour of all of my um, watercolor supplies and maybe all of my paint painting supplies, not just watercolor. I may eventually do a tour of the supplies that I do have. But going through everything, I ran across my koi and I have quite a few different sets of koi watercolors. So I have here my studio palette. Most of this stuff I have not pulled out in quite some time. Then this is the, I want to say this one is the 36. I can't, I can't remember how many it is in this one. This one is, no, this one is the 30. So this one may be 42. So this is the 30. I know that, I know for sure this one is the third, the, um, the 30, because I used to use this one a lot and then i also have the tubes so today we're going to look at a few of these but i'm going to do a comparison using the tubes and the set of 30 because they'll be they'll most likely have one common it should be more of a fair comparison because these are going to have way more colors than this set of 12 tools. So first we're going to have a look at my studio palette. Which has a six well here. Six palette well. And then there's an eight palette well here. And then this is the this is the studio 72. And so far all I did was use my use this one for my swatch card. And it includes two sponges and two water brushes. So this is the swatch card of what they look like and I will work with these at a different time. This one is like 42 colors, 48 colors. Okay, it's on my swatch card. So this one is the 48, and this is the swatch card for it. I did have a, quite some time with this one as well. And this is the colors in this one. And it also comes with the water brush. And one sponge on the side. I put this little extra brush in there from, I think this was from my Travel Sennelier set. And I put that in there for details. But this is the swatch card for this one. Okay, and the one I will be painting from, the palette I will be painting from is this set of 30. I don't have, I will have to redo a swatch card for this one because I don't have my swatch card in here right now. And... And I also have not made a swatch card for my tubes yet. But this is the tubes, the set of 12. 
So the reason I wanted to do this video today, comparing the two to the pans, is because I do remember enjoying painting with um koi watercolors, but the last video that I did recently where I did this comparison, I'm happy to do it short to you from the side. This comparison video where I painted with the koi. I didn't like how it came out too much. I guess because I, I can see a lot of the, um, it's not rubbing off, but I can see a lot of the chalky pigment on top of the paper. And I was also able to see that with the, the whole bind. The, I felt the Arteza and the Prime, even though they are dye based um, watercolors, performed much better. But I did remember at one time I really used to like painting with colored watercolors. So today I kind of revisited them a little bit. And I do remember I used to paint with them in my Fabriano artist journal. I, so I had to run to grab this journal. I mean, yeah, this one. This one is not the one I used to paint with the koi in the most, but I do have one painting that I ran across the head the koi, that I did paint. This could possibly be koi. At one time I used to label. And I don't, I don't remember if I did koi swatches in this book. Because I had a smaller one exactly like this that I mainly use for my koi watercolor. So yeah, it's like they're not in this one as much. But I do know that I enjoy painting with koi on this type of paper for some reason. And this is the Fabriano artist journal paper this is this one is the um like the quad ratio size the, the square size this one is just the classic the one i showed you before and all that means is the um the dimensions that it is made from so and i can't believe a lot of these i i want to say this is this koi This is not. And today I um I did this, didn't finish it, but because I thought of a different idea that I wanted to do. So I did this and I, I enjoyed doing it. So I decided that I would do a double illustration using the core watercolors. I will paint the same illustration one with the um two watercolors and one using the pan watercolor so i'm going to go ahead on and get started on that okay so first up will be the two watercolors and decide on what color I will start with as far as the background. And I will be painting from my little ceramic palette here. And this is, um, Coil, some of the two coil watercolors that I used earlier and the main color here was the um the vermilion hue and I mixed in a little where it's darker it has a little cobalt blue hue mixed in with it but I'm not sure I may use some of that I'm not sure but uh I knew definitely I'll go with some of this Persian blue.
in the binding is since I have not used this stuff in so long most of it was separated this one looks like it's pretty good okay this one is is pretty good should have put it on this side but oh well all right that's the Prussian blue and I guess I'll go with the lemon yellow. That one is very loose. And I still have some of the cobalt here, so I'll work with that first. So I decided to um add any more so what i'm going to do is mix a background color first and from here and this what i'm using right now is the cobalt yeah the cobalt blue here from um, that i had in here earlier And what I like about just these two colors here is you can get a beautiful gray. So. Go for that. And behind the one does I do need to add in some of the gray background, but it has to be a little lighter. Okay. So for the grapes, let's see how this one is going to react. Okay, this one is not separated either, which is pretty good.
And for some reason, I really prefer painting with koi on this paper. I see a difference in how it reacts on this paper. And my me doing the comparison, I want to see if I like the tubes, which one I, I prefer, or if there is a difference in using the tubes as opposed to the, the pans. So first I'm going for quite the impressionistic look before going in with um, details. And this is grapes, so the wine show be great as well. I mean, purple grapes, so I have a red wine. I think I'll do the wine. Make the wine just a tad bit darker. No, wine glass. A little more blue here. They're kind of separated from the background. I still don't want to make it too dark. Okay. And next we'll go with let's see what I'm mixing my green. The 
I think I'm going to start with the pans because I don't want the, the leaves to run into the wine glass. So, starting with the pans, I'm going to have to look at these colors that I use. So, I use the fresh and blue. With, no, I started with cobalt blue for the background, and we'll go here with that. I really don't like getting rid of old color. I'm just doing that for the video. Most of the time, I just work with, continue to work with whatever colors I have in my palette. So, let me go through here. And which one is, I would assume that. Okay, so I just took from here, make sure you guys can see that. I just took from here for cobalt blue, and I'm going to take from here for the vermilion. This one looks closest to the vermilion to me, so I'll mix those. Now it's more purple. So already I noticed the pans and the tubes are not mixing the same. So I'm going to have to add something to neutralize this out a little. And I would say I'll go here. Just a tad bit. That's kind of toning it down. I have one more. They're not exactly the same. I seem to like the um the mix from the pans much better. But I mean, from the tubes, much better. But, okay, so that's the gray. I have achieved it. And let's end with the background here. So with the, um, the difference in the pans and the tubes, is I only needed those two colors to achieve the gray from the two from the pans I needed three.
Sometimes I add a little more water. Okay, so all of this should be dry, and what I'm going to do is jump back on the tool color and come back to the pan. All right. Okay, so now I will add a little more detail to some of the grapes. We have to get a better, use a better brush. I'll see shortly. So I'm going to pause and continue to fill this in, and then I'll be right back. Okay, the details are done on the grapes, and I enhanced the background just a little bit to also help the grapes to pop a little more. So I'm going to go ahead on and paint in the stem, and then I'll start on the koi pans.
Okay, so I'll let that dry before I do anything else to that one. And I will begin with the bottom. Make sure we can see this palette. <laughs> It is okay. So let's get the great color going, and we will also use Russian blue. And hopefully these will mix up just the same. And because I don't have these colors labeled, I basically have to guess at the colors. But I will go with, let me see. Let's just go on one, two, three. Yeah, I'll go with this one. Kind of look like what I need. If not, I'll go back and see. Need a little more of it. I guess it's because there's fillers in the pan. I can already see a difference in the pan colors and the two colors. And also the two colors that I have. They're much older set. Um, I noticed they are made in Japan and the pan colors are made in China. So I don't know if that's a difference in as that makes a difference in as far as how they were manu manufactured. And when I first got the tubes, I almost didn't give them a fair chance because I never really jumped into using the tubes because I bought the tubes to be actually to be refills. So when my daughter was younger, I decided to make a watercolor pan for for her. And I included some of the Koi tube watercolors in the set that I well, she had she originally had a Windsor and Newton set, and some of her colors ran out, and I replaced it with the colors that ran out. I replaced it with some of the koi colors, but I did not like how the koi tubes dried. They dried like very cracky, and they didn't stay in the pan very well. So I didn't like him like them at all, and I never really gave them a fair chance after that. I had never really used them myself. She's the only one that I had given the opportunity to actually use the colors. But me using them today on the illustration that I showed you when I first began the video, I, I felt like I really like these. I'm glad I didn't discard them. I, I was just going to get rid of them. But I decided to keep them and it was a good, great idea because I actually like them. 
better than I like the pans. And as you can see, with me mixing the colors, I have a much cleaner looking color here. And it's cleaner and brighter. Although these are dark like um, grapes would be, I'm getting a much better mix from the pan, from the tubes than I am from the pan. So for this one, I think I'm going to add a little bit more red. The first one, I added more blue, but this one, I'm going to add a little more red. I see these colors, they're not going to totally match, but... And the thing about the Koi pan, I really love their packaging. I think they do a great job with their packaging. The, the way you can just pack this and the plastic is it's like a really, really hard, durable plastic. So you wouldn't have a fear of, I don't know, like, like maybe throughout the years it may crack, but as far as like having it now is very the plastic is very very durable okay so let me go in a little behind this glass should have added a little bit blue i'll go on top of it with a little blue but i have to be careful because the wine is still wet. And I'm just doing this to kind of separate the glass from the background. So I'm going to raise this up so you can see so far. How much cleaner the tubes look as opposed to the pans and I still haven't added the details to the pans yet so there's a lot of filler in the pans I think I will have a much better experience working from the tubes but I would advise if you work from the tubes don't let them dry because they don't dry well So I'm gonna pause again. Um, well, first I'll add the leaves. It should be okay for me to paint. 
paint the leaves. And after I do that, I'll pause, do the background, and I mean, do the details on the grapes, and I'll be back. Now for these grapes, I think I chose a better yellow for the leaves. I chose the darker one rather than going with this one. So I do like these leaves better. Okay, so I'm going to pause and Add the details and I'll be back. Okay guys, I went ahead and finished up with as much of the details as I could on both. Probably because I don't want the video to be too long. It's already at like 35 minutes. And also it is like 2, almost 2.30 in the morning and I'm getting really tired. But I'm going to go ahead on and write the names in of each one color that I use. Okay, so and I've also added the lifting shadows. So I get hopefully you can see that I have added a good bit of detail to it. I will lift it up again so you can have a good look at it. But this is the boy. And this is the Okay. I guess it's dry enough for me to Okay, so this is the difference in the two. Okay, so we have here the, the Koi watercolor tool set, and I have to step on my desk that makes it hard for me to push this back. I'm gonna do this sideways. And this is the Koi watercolor pan set. And you can see that this one is. A little slightly more chalky but this is still fun I really enjoy doing it and I will continue to use both both of the watercolors in this sketchbook because 
they are perfect watercolors for doing practice work without me having to use my professional colors. And I, I just love doing the comparison art. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And until next time, thank you so much for watching.